Hey everybody, this is Matt from 360 Labs. Haven't been in front of the camera for a while, so I figured, uh, why the hell not? Um, so we're recently testing the uh, Insta360 Sphere right here. A lot of folks are asking me about my impressions, so I thought I would do a quick review and sort of talk about some of the issues we're having with the camera and some of the things we like about the camera. I'm gonna start with all the negative stuff because you can find the specs online. You can find all the marketing stuff on Insta's website if you wanna read about how amazing the camera is, but I'm gonna tell you about our actual experience with it. For those that aren't familiar with the product, uh, the Insta360 Sphere is a 360 camera made to strap to a DJI Air 2 or Air 2S. It has a lens on top and a lens on bottom, and when you stitch it together, it actually cancels out the drone and gives you a beautiful, seamless 360 shot that includes no drone at all. Saves you time in post-production for having to remove it or do a sky replacement and also allows you to fly it in a lot of situations where you otherwise wouldn't wanna hang a 360 camera underneath the drone, like flying under trees or through tall buildings in an urban area. You're gonna be able to do that a lot easier and get a clean 360 shot. Flying with a 360 camera on your drone can be very dangerous considering the pendulum effect. It changes the center of gravity and can really cause your motors to have to work a lot harder, which strains your battery. If you're also flying fast and you're coming to a sudden stop, you can set your drone off balance and cause it to kind of spin out. And if you can't recover from that, that can actually lead to a crash and the loss of your camera and or your drone or both. Which is why we're excited about this product because we see it as um, an opportunity to really get some crazy creative shots that we wouldn't otherwise attempt while hanging a drone underneath. And it also makes it a lot easier to do that remove in post because there's no remove to do. Although it's not as perfect as you might hope. So a little bit about some of the problems with the camera, some of the things we've experienced. First of all, the big one is the GPS signal. Now on Insta360's website, in their advertising, it specifically tells you that the camera will not impede the drone's GPS signal. But for many people, myself included, this is not true at all. In an open area, we will commonly get somewhere between 18 and 25 satellites. But with the camera on and recording, we will get 12 if we're lucky. It kind of hovers on that line of the minimum amount of satellites that it needs to stay positioned in GPS and understand where it is and set its home point. Now, if you don't have the accurate GPS, you can still fly, although it will affect the stability of your flight. The drone can tend to drift as it's trying to gain its position, figure out where it is. It actually relies on the sensors to try and figure out where it is in relation to objects in the area where you're flying if it can't use GPS. And that's just not as accurate and not as stable as flying with solid GPS lock. A lot of the smart features on the drone itself will not work if GPS isn't enabled. You'll also lose features like return to home because the drone won't know where it is. And other things that require GPS, like looking at your map and understanding where you're at, those things are not gonna be accessible to you as well. For some people, it's not a problem at all. So I'm not really sure if it's specific to our drone that's causing this problem, but for some reason, we're one of the unlucky ones. We're hoping that maybe Insta360 will look into this and try and figure out what's going on, maybe do some research and pull the customers and try and figure out like exactly why this is happening to a large percentage of us. Another issue that I noticed with the camera is the noise level is very, very chunky. Um, and that's not something that's uncommon with Insta360 cameras. A lot of their consumer grade cameras, when you look at it, you know, on a monitor, a nice monitor or in a VR headset, it's like you're staring at TV static. It's not appealing. It takes a lot of cleanup and post to make it look nice. This particular camera is no exception. Now they do have a grain removal setting within the Insta360 Studio app that I've tried to use. And it does help a little bit. It probably gets rid of about half of that. But if you really want to clean that up in post, you're probably going to want to use a third-party application like Topaz or Neat Video to get that clean video out of this. 
Another issue that's not gone is the stitching problem. And the stitching problem was a big issue with the aerial edition that people complained about. But we're also not surprised about that. When you consider the parallax and the distance between these lenses, it's actually a lot. Um, and considering how well the stitching does turn out, it's actually kind of surprising that it does a pretty good job. But anytime you have lenses this far apart, you're gonna have parallax issues, you're gonna have stitching issues. But particularly with this, it's, it's when the drone is stopping and starting that it's at its worst. If you fly at a consistent speed in any one direction, usually the stitching will correct itself, it looks great, or it's just not really as noticeable. But you are gonna see that on the horizon, and I've seen it on a lot of different shots. Beyond that, you know, there's also issues with rolling shutter, as I mentioned, with stitching. You know, when the drone is coming to a stop, there is a lot of vibration. When you're fighting heavy winds, there's a lot of vibration. And you'll see that in the stitching. You'll see those distorted wavy lines and those issues pop up. So let's dive into some footage samples. Spear can shoot 360 video at a maximum of 5760 by 2880, but um, I reframed or scaled down the footage here to 1080 HD to fit this video. These are the kinds of shots I bought Sphere for. I've always wanted to be able to fly through the woods without the hassle of a very difficult drone remove. And this one, I'm flying 30 miles per hour under a bridge over water. It's definitely not something I would attempt with a KuCam 8K hanging underneath. Highlights can be a bit blown out. I'd suggest a negative 0.5 or a negative 1 EV. This is a single frame at 100% zoom from both the Insta360 Sphere and the 1RS 1 inch 360 edition from the same spot. As you can see, that one inch sensor is able to capture a lot of detail in the farthest mountains that is lost in the sphere. The sphere also has a bit of purple fringing due to over sharpening. Sharpening levels cannot be changed on the sphere. The one inch edition sharpening was set to low on the shot. So I waited a little bit longer to put together my conclusion, considering we've had some work time hands on with this camera to kind of check it out and even use it for some projects. Uh, all in all, it's comparable to a lot of compact 360 cameras like the GoPro Max or the Insta360 ONE X or X2 that a lot of people do like to fly on drones, either above or below, uh, but with the added bonus that you don't have to actually remove the drone from your footage. Although we do feel like cameras like the KuCam 8K and cameras like even like the new Insta360 ONE INCH 360 are gonna give you better results than this as far as dynamic range and quality of footage. Now, a lot of people who are reframers probably aren't gonna care as much for the quality, but a lot of the content that we've seen shot by this camera is like high elevation stuff that is not necessarily um, super wide angle or really doing anything or flying under any objects. And if that's what you're using it for, you might just ask yourself, why aren't you just shooting with the onboard camera that's on the drone? You're gonna get better quality. Um, you just have to learn how to use those intelligent flight modes and do interesting things with this camera to be able to point it. It's a camera that you have to point, but the sphere really works best in those situations where you get to fly it under trees or in those situations where you just wouldn't dream of flying another 360 camera because you just can't remove that drone from your shot. But ironically, those are the situations where you're gonna have a lot of problems with your GPS. If you're uncomfortable flying with GPS interference, it might not be a great product for you. We've probably done more than a dozen test flights and haven't had any crashes or near misses. But we do notice sometimes the drone will be a little bit erratic and we'll notice some you know, unstable things happening with it. So there's definitely a drawback there. For 360 Labs, I really think this is a great option for us to get some cool creative shots in those situations where we're working on kind of lower budget productions where you know our client doesn't really have the time or the means to fly a larger drone with a more expensive 360 camera, or we're just in a situation where it would be impossible to remove that drone from the shot. We also just love the fact that this is so easy to use. It's so simple to strap to the drone. Um, with my other 
rig, you know, I have this 3D printed mount and I have to put all these pieces together every single time I want to fly a 360 camera. And it's just kind of, kind of janky and it takes a long time to set up. So a lot of times I'll have an opportunity to get a great 360 aerial and just out of laziness, I'll be like, well, no, I don't really want to do that. So having this in my bag, there are a lot of chances I'll take, a lot of opportunities I'll take to get that 360 shot that I otherwise wouldn't. So that's why we think it's really fun. Anyway, thanks for checking out my review. If you want to see more of our work and more of the stuff we're doing, check out 360labs.net.